5.34 p.m. 22nd September 2017. This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video sponsored by Topaya Vets. As this video contains surgical footage, viewer discretion is advised. Today, Dr. Singh will be doing a guided demonstration for young vets on how to spay a female dog with minimal skin incision. Our patient today is a 10-month-old female Maltese crossbreed. Okay, the spay has been done about half an hour ago and uh, I'm, I'm uh, doing a video to teach the younger vets how I spay a dog with the minimum length of skin incision. As you can see here, now what I do is I look for the umbilical scar, this umbilical scar which was where the umbilicus was. So normally I, from here, I will estimate, for this small breed, no? I will estimate about 1.5 centimeter. My incision starts here, 1.5 centimeter from the umbilical scar. So from here, from this 1.5 centimeter, then I will take the scalpel blade and cut more or less 1.8 or 1.8 centimeter. So, so that, uh, this is the shorter skin incision, which which is a, a available to take out the ovaries and the uterus. Now, as you can see, you can see this is the ovary and uterus. You have to poke up. Okay, so the ovary and uterus will be actually here this way. Okay, then when you incise, you come out inside. Really. When you when you incise. When I come to this side, when I do the skin incision, then I cut into the linear alba and the muscle and separate, and then I have the hook. So I, I, you come come to my side, I hook in. So I have to hook out the uterus. So normally I, I do 45 degrees. Huh? Go in 45 degrees, turn, turn the hook, and pull out. So I demonstrate here. I go in, then I turn the hook. Then hook up, you see? Hook up the left uterine body first, the uterine horn first. Okay, hook up. And once you manage to hook this one out, the other one is easy already. Because the other one just follows this one. So this is where many young vets cry because sometimes they, they try and hook, but they can't get it. Huh? So they, they hook 10 times, 20 times, they can't, they can't get it because sometimes the dog is too fat. Sometimes they can't manage to get the right location. The location is more or less 45 degrees to the to the skin incision, 45 degrees. And then you turn, you turn your hook around and then pull. So if you don't turn, obviously you, you cannot. So you go in below, go in below the the, the uter uh, uterine horn below, and when you go in below. When you're going below, then you go in below there, and then you hook up. It's easily said and done actually, yeah? but of course you have, for me I have so many years of experience, so I then managed to get it, even for this stuff, it's the third time. So I did one time, nothing, two time, nothing. The third time, the uterine horn was hooked up. So I will consider that uh, a relief because sometimes it's really hard to get it. So once you hook out, then uh, the, the other thing is just tie and all this. So I'm going to explain that. That one is uh, the standard. So I just want to explain that. To get the, the smaller skin incision, which the owner is most happy with, you, you really need to to uh, get this distance, uh, the start of the incision, to the umbilical scar. Umbilical scar is around here, I don't think you can see, but some of them is more obvious. So it's about 2 cm. So you, you, you don't go 1 cm because then you can't reach the uterine horn, uterine body, you can't reach. So it's too, too, too short, it's no use. Too long, too, too far away, you cannot get the ovaries. Now some vets, they, 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 they cut a bit far, they say, instead of uh, 2 cm, that, that applies to the cat also. They cut they cut at uh, one centimeter. Or they cut let's say they cut at three centimeter. So if they cut at three centimeter from the umbilical scar, 
so they cut here and then they cut this side so that means the ovaries the ovary is too far away so when they pull when they pull to, to tie the the ovarian ligament the whole ovary breaks so when it breaks of course the ovary drop in it drop in here and it's really a big big uh, big thing because that means the dog will come and hit again because the ovary has dropped in and then the vet completes the surgery now that is no good for the owner because of for the dog because the dog will keep cycling because of the ovary tissue sometimes the ovary is uh, so hard to tie because the incision is too far and the vet doesn't want to enlarge normally you should enlarge the incision you will find that you will find that the ovary is too too far away and too tight then you, you just increase the incision the skin incision so that you don't put tension on the ovary because once you put tension on the ovary you put tension on it the ovary might just break you see the ovary might just break because you keep pulling you keep pulling and then the ovary will just break and some pieces might drop inside and so if there's any ovarian tissue then you have problems already because the dog will come on heat again and uh, and uh, that is called stump pyometra sometimes they call it uh, because the, the dog will the dog or cat will start to have infection older age and then this this infection will come from here the cause stump pyometra now you can see that uh, there should be no bleeding and now my, my assistant will just tape it over. Now normally, normally I, I, I have a protective uh, blaster so that uh, the dog doesn't uh, lick it. Uh. And then normally I don't uh, give the collar, especially if, if it's possible. Then the only complaint is sometimes the dog is allergic, uh, allergic to the plaster. Now this buffer is a bit too too big, I would say. Too big. Um, normally, ideally, ideally the plaster should just not go around the nipples actually, but it should be the plaster should be just a bit a bit longer. Huh? But, but then anyway, this is much firmer. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to give the antisedan. And this this stuff was given dometor plus ketamine. IV for for sedation and, and now I I will wake, wake her up by giving the the antidote called antisedan. Now she's not fully awake yet, so the antisedan will reverse it. Now before that I'll give the painkiller antibiotics, which is Vitri but Domitol, subcutaneously, so that there's no pain. Huh? Yeah, so this one this is a standard procedure in top of your vets. Then uh, the other thing is this uh, suture, this suture inside is absorbable so the owner doesn't have to come back for stitch removal. That's an advantage for the owner. Now I'm going to give the antidote, no? it's called antisedan. Now you can see the time, 5.42. Now between 5 minutes, the dog should be, should be awake already. So you see, I'm going to give IM. Okay, so it's... 542. Now this e-collar may be too big. Yeah. This what size is this? Mm. So now this size 14 or size 12. This is 20. more. Now this is more than cat. So actually the dog is only the gums are okay. You see a bit pale. Huh? The normally anesthetic they, they they do have the pale gums, but the tongue is okay. You can see the color. Huh? Now you see it's going to get up, you see, you see the, the effect of antecedent, which is quite good, you see the dog, it, it's like antidote, no? antidote to Domitol, I give Domitol 0 0.15 IV, no? ketamine 0 0.2, for this dog uh, weighing about 4.3 kg, and uh, you can see, now it's really a bit more uh, it's able to stand up, you can see that, you see, because Domitol Sedation has been reversed. Now it's only how many minutes? One minute. Only. So you, you see that it's 5:43. Yeah? So by 5:45, I mean, uh, or five, uh, because it's five minutes from 5:43. So 
the dog should be standing up already. But even then you see he's putting his legs up there, you see? Now you can see the dog on this side. You see him? Now you see a bit, then you can see. He's back to normal, you see? It's not like his breathing is back to normal and the heart rate has starts to, to, to go back to normal. Now we give the e-collar to prevent any biting. Then painkillers. See the dog, you see? The big and that's about less than five minutes from the injection of antecedent. So some vets they prefer not to inject and let the dog become by 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 itself. For me I I, I prefer to inject so that the dog is alert. You see, and then back to normal res respiratory uh, respiration back to normal, you see. So then uh, I don't have to worry whether the dog is going to sleep a long time or not. But some owner says that the dog sleeps a long time after the spay and, and uh, of course the owner worries that uh, it's sleeping so long due to the sedation effects. But now you see, how much time? 545, only 2 minutes, right? The sound was 543. Was it 2 minutes or 3 minutes? Eh? See? Much, much uh, difference because of the antidote. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. So,